this episode, we continue on from episode 221, where we're going to add in additional features, as well as look in adding some tests, and also when we would use test-driven development. So many developers have their own habits on when they're going to test their code. And that's not to say that one method is better than another, but over time, you'll start to see some habits arise, and you really have to decide what's going to be best for the team that you're working on, or the project that you're working on, and what the best approach would be. But in a nutshell, to explain how I usually test my applications, I do write automated tests for any of the new features that I'm developing. However, it's a matter of how much testing I write around those features, as well as when those tests are getting written. So on creating new features, I typically do not follow the test-driven development approach. However, I'll usually have a whiteboard or a sheet of paper where I kind of draw out my idea and architect it there. I'll bounce it around the team to get their input, and then I would start developing the feature. Once a feature has been completed, or a subsection of it completed, I'll go back and then write the tests. And for me personally, this just has a better workflow in getting things done. Now, if a bug is introduced into the application, and we have some tests around that area, but maybe we're now hitting an edge case, I will actually follow the test-driven development approach, and I'll first write the test of what should be passing and what our expected value should be covering the use case scenarios that the bug was mentioning. I'll then go back into my code, and likely I'll also write a couple of other tests around that same area of the code base to make sure that what is currently working will still continue to work. So once I have my red tests and some of the green tests, I'll then go back into my code and then start refactoring. This is going to give me much more confidence around the refactoring job or the bug fix job that I'm doing than just fixing the bug and then testing afterwards. So depending on where I am in the software development lifecycle, I will switch between writing my tests after the feature has been completed, but before it is deployed, or I'll write the tests first if I'm fixing a bug. And then depending on the application, I'll use whatever test suite is included. Personally, I'm a huge fan of RSpec. It just feels very natural and I enjoy using it. However, more recently, I found myself using the built-in test suite with Rails, and that's based on Minitest. And I choose to stick with Minitest because you can essentially accomplish the exact same things that you can with RSpec. They're both test suites that test your application code. And the reason why I stick with Minitest is because I'm not adding any additional dependencies into my Rails application. For the past couple of years, upgrading from a Rails 4 to a Rails 5 application or even the minor updates, and upgrading from a Rails 5 to Rails 6 application, one of the gems that constantly caused problems, and especially if I was upgrading as soon as it was either in a release candidate or the final release, was with RSpec. RSpec has been quick to fix their compatibility for the new versions of Rails, but it was still a stopgap in my development because I wasn't able to successfully run RSpec. And in each case, I could reference the master branch on GitHub, and that worked for a period of time until I could switch back to the Ruby Gems version. But it's still a pain, and I see that doing anything like that is a sense of technical debt within my application. So one tried and true method that would stick around for upgrading Rails applications would be sticking with what Rails has provided. And again, that's not to say that RSpec is bad in any way, shape, or form, but it is a nuisance when upgrading my Rails applications. So I do choose to stick with, nowadays, with Minitest over RSpec for any new applications. However, if there is an existing application that already has a full test suite in RSpec, I would say continue using RSpec because it is a great framework to use. So in this episode, we're going to look at setting up many tests in this application, and we're going to take the approach where there have been no tests added into this application, especially around the business logic, and we'll start going from there. And then we'll look at introducing a bug, and then following a test-driven development approach to resolving that bug. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the Pro Membership.